Hello, good evening, everyone. Can all of you hear me clearly? Good evening, Miss. We can hear you clearly. Right. Thank you very much. Right. So, everyone, uh, welcome to today's um, session. I would like to make it actually uh, a workshop so that you can do a lot of things in today's session. So, uh, we are talking about that you can. So cards and tables, and um, as I did, I hope you will be very interactive with me, and I hope to do a few activities, and I hope uh, we can talk about some of the issues that you might be uh, having, and also discuss certain requirements uh, in your CS2 exam or uh, the level of exam that you are taking. So uh, again, uh, just like the previous two sessions, let me remind all of you, everyone, please uh, do not uh, engage in any multitasking, right? So put your gadgets uh, away, uh, make sure that you are 100% concentrating on, uh, do not a lot of participants. I think uh, that of course tells us that there are a lot of people who needs um, the knowledge that we are giving. So I would really encourage all of you to take the maximum benefit, right? And please remain from beginning to the end because sometimes we notice that there are uh, a certain number of people who leave the sessions uh, before they actually, uh, before uh, we conclude the session properly, right? Uh, so we the sessions uh, before they actually uh, before, uh, a real classroom. The classroom, as you know, you can't just get up and walk out of the class, right? So um, please concentrate. Uh, bring uh, a note, a book, uh, some pens and paper so that you can do the activities, our questions I'm giving you, and you can really clarify some of the problems you may face when it comes to describing graphs, charts, and tables, right? So uh, again, I want uh, all of you to remember uh, to be 100% here, be interactive, ask me questions, right? And also send me answers. Uh, regarding any of the areas that you think is important for you, right? So um, let's start with a little question today, right? Uh, so why do you think graphs, charts, and tables are important to professional people? I mean, what what do they do for you, right? As a professional person, not maybe not only as a working so. Tell me some of the benefits that we actually get by using graphs, charts, and tables uh, in the in a in a very uh, effective manner. Okay, so I'm going to give everyone one minute, one minute, and I want all of you to use the chat and send me at least one advantage uh, that you think uh, you can get by using uh, graphs and charts. Uh, effectively in your work. Okay, so one minute to everyone. Please use the chat so that we can check whether the chat chat uh, is also working. Okay, so one minute. Uh, tell me some advantages uh, of using these effectively. Okay, very good. So I, I see a lot of quick um, interactive people, right? Very good. I, I can see that you all are listening to us, right? That's important. And as I always say, don't cut vegetables and, uh, you know, send emails, try to concentrate so that as always, you can get a lot of benefit from these sessions. I think CA is, uh, you know, they're really concerned about your development so therefore they have taken the trouble uh, of organizing these sessions free of charge for all of you which i think is really uh, wonderful right because 
uh, you're getting uh, the full support so that personally you can clarify uh, problems that you face right okay so let's look at some of these answers i want more answers please right uh, i just want to see whether you all are there and you all are listening to me uh, if you can think about the topic right so just a warmer to start the session um, so analyze and forecast data make decisions summarize okay spelling issues everyone Right, even if you spend a send, send a quick answer, still your spelling has to be good, isn't it? So just check the spelling. Graphic mode is more convenient to understand. Okay, that that is Sanjeeva. Very good point. Right, I was waiting for that answer from 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 someone because there's something that is always really attractive. Um, when it comes to visual information. So I think Sanjeeva's answer reminds us that, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of attraction that you can get when you use graphs, charts, tables effectively, right? Not just as students, but also as, uh, you know, professionals, we can get a lot of benefits for better interpretation of information, Kokila says that. So that's also a very important point, right? You can show how much of a professional you are. You can show your theoretical knowledge, your technical skills, if you use uh, graphs, charts, tables, effectively in your communication, right? Not to, not to also mention, that uh, communication skills it's not just about interpreting something right um, so i would like to combine sanjeeva's answer with kokila's answer because both together really provides us a dynamic benefit right what is the dynamic benefit when you use a graph or a chart or a table you can draw attention to your overall skill set right it's not just the technical skills but also your presentation skills your analytical ability the ability that you have to understand your audiences because it's not easy to use a graph or a chart or a table right so i remember once i did this session on storytelling with graphs and charts and in that session, I received a lot of positive comments because uh, there's, a, there's a big demand, right? Now, today's session, I'm not going to go into those details, but today we will talk about the basic requirements, especially because this is an exam-oriented session. However, please remember that you can get a lot of... Um, a lot of benefits if you know how to tell a story using graphs charts and tables right so that was something i really enjoyed doing so let's move on to uh, the first thing i want all of you to do right now remember i told you to have a pen and paper with you so uh, you need to be ready to do certain things and i'm going to get you to check your answers right so uh, since we have a large number of people i'm unable to read all of your answers but i'm looking at a lot of them right very very effective uh, very good answers right and everyone's now thinking about graphs and charts now right okay so i want you to look at this description what is your opinion on the following description right so there's about 200 people in the session today, uh, which is uh, which makes me very happy. But since I, I, I since I'm unable to ask each of you separately, just think about it. Okay, what do you? What is your opinion on the following description? What I'm asking is, I want you to tell me if it is easy to understand or difficult to understand, and why. Right. So I want you to write it down in your notebook so that when we go to the next activity, you will be able to compare and see what you initially thought about it. Right. So my question is, read the description and tell me your opinion. Is it easy to understand? Is it difficult to 
understand um, and then we will uh, talk about it okay so here i'm giving you a quick 30 seconds so that you can jot your answers down Okay, so Fonseca has already said difficult to understand. Very true, at least from uh, someone general, um, from someone who has a general knowledge in um, statistics. I think this is very difficult to understand. So um, let me ask you another simple thing to do, right? Can you tell me one uh, uh, trend? that you can notice from here. Can you spot a trend by reading this description? Okay, what do you think? Is it easier for you to notice a trend from this description? Okay, so what I've done now is that we've looked at this description and I'm guessing that most of you um, um, think that it is difficult to understand. So my next uh, activity is I have taken this data and I have put it into a table, right? Again, I'm asking the same question from you, right? Okay, good. So Pradeepa has given a trend. She says growth, very good. Nivesha and Patirana, Yes, very good. But okay, that, that's really good, right? Was it easy and quick for you to get to that uh, trend? Was it an easy thing to get to that trend? Or did you have to read and spend some time on that? So it's not easy to quickly get at a trend, right? Now see what I have done. I've taken the same data and I have put it into a table. So I'm asking you the same question now, right? What is my question? Identify a trend from this, okay? So let me switch to the next one. Yeah, so same data, same data, but now it's in the table format. Can you send me one um, trend? Right, one short sentence about a trend. Yeah, Dilani says easy to understand, very true. Compared to the previous description, when you use a table, see what a big difference it makes, right? Now, why is that knowledge important? Because, you know, unlike all of you, you are writing your reports, you are writing for general audiences most of the time, right, in your job especially. So in that case, just imagine what a big impact this makes on normal human beings, right, who don't have very high technical knowledge as all of you. So it's, it makes things very easy for other people, right? So this is something that really uh, important for all professionals, I think, right? A lot of people are unable to understand um, the audience, right? To whom they're writing to. So uh, yes, Prasandi says, can get more details and easy to understand, very true. Right, can all of you write down or send whichever you like, right? Everyone has to do this, please, right? Write down one sentence focusing on a trend that you notice in this uh, table. So I'm giving you one minute in your notebooks or in the chat, whichever you prefer. Just write one sentence, one little sentence about a trend. I think Dial has sent already 
uh, a trend. Yeah, very good. Kokila has sent uh, a good sentence. Yeah, okay, Patirana also, right? Now, everyone, please do this because gradually we are going to go down into more serious things in the session. So if you don't do these things, you will not really understand how to change and how to score better uh, for the graph question, right? Now, remember, just like in the two previous sessions I did with you, uh, I always like to focus on what the examiners are saying about your performance, right? So my sessions are always based on evidence. So you know that you know, you know there's something important that you need. So that change does not come if you just look at me and just, you know, listen to me like a sermon, right? So that is that is the online like the culture uh, in our country, I suppose, right? People think that you know if uh, you have to attend a session, you just sit like a pudding and you just listen to um, the resource person. But I don't like that approach. I think it's always we need to sit down and do things, right? If we do things only, we will make bigger things happen, right? Okay. So let me do, let me go into the next uh, part, right? Again, what I have done is I have taken the same information and now I'm using it in a graph or a chart, right? And again, my question is, what is the trend that you notice from this one? So look at the same information, but this time I'm using two graphs. So I hope all of you can notice the difference, uh, the change that it makes, right? Okay, now we did three separate things, right? What are the three separate things we've done? Uh, first of all, we looked at a description, text description. Then we looked at a table and then we looked at graphs, okay? Now compare all three of these in your mind, right? Which one do you think is the easiest and the most powerful visual uh, information that attracts uh, people uh, into, into your writing? Right. So I think a lot of you have noticed the graphic. So let me just show you the three slides again, right? So this is the description, and this is the table, and this is the graph, right? So you you will see uh, that you know, it's really um, 
easy for us to do the things that are really highlighted and as opposed to just basic description however in the exam what we need to do is we need to reverse this process right so in the exam what happens the examiners will give you a graph or a chart or a table and they will ask you to write the text right so always remember you have to reverse the process what you need to do is to look at the graph and make sure that the trends and the key features are the key features are highlighted really well uh, when Students, please be uh, please bear with us for five minutes. I think uh, Miss uh, Chamika has a power cut. Within five minutes, five to ten minutes, she will uh, reconnecting. So please bear with us. Everyone, can you hear me? Yes, Miss, we can hear you. Okay, so I just lost power, so I'm back again. Now, give me a few minutes. I will, um, I'll have to find the materials. Just two, three minutes, please. Okay, Miss. Thank you.
Uh, can you see the slides now? Yes, Miss, we can see the slides. Okay, I'm very sorry because, you know, I had to switch to the uh, other one. Right, so let's, I hope we can continue now. Um, so we were here and I was just talking to all of you about um, how effective it is uh, when it comes to using graphs and charts what a big impact we can make, right? So, but in the exam, you have to reverse this process. So I was just telling you before I got uh, cut off that uh, when you do the reversal, what you need to do is to make sure that someone can visualize the graphs or the chart uh, through your description, right? So in order to do that, we need to know a few basics, um, in the uh, exam, right? Uh, so the discussion, you may have understood that it is important to accurately display data using the correct type of table or graph, okay? So here I'm going to um, take you to a little handout and I'm going to show you all the different types of, um, you know, these um, graphs or charts. I want you to try and match them with the correct function. Miss, screen sharing has, has stopped. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to share uh, um, okay. another one. Uh, okay, Miss. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's opening a little slow because um, I have shifted to another one. Okay. Shamika, uh, sorry to uh, jump in. If you want, yes. I can share the screen. If you can send me the documents. This is Achala. No, I can, Achala. I can, Achala. Just give me a second. If it is not clear, I'll do that, okay? Share. Okay, can you see the handout I'm showing all of you? Yes, we can see, Miss. Ah, excellent. Right. So this is, let me enlarge it a little bit. I want all of you to very quickly draw this. You don't need to make it very neat and tidy, but this is going to help you when you go for your exam. And when you're composing your answer, this is going to help you narrow down the different techniques that you can use for each of the graph description. Because I think one of the main problems is some students don't understand what sort of reasons are behind the use of different type of these graphs and charts. So that's what we are going to learn, right? So everyone, uh, within one minute, I just want you to draw this table quickly. And I want you to, uh, I'm going to show you the rest of it. Um, and you need to match the users with the examples, right? It's not a difficult one most probably all of you already know this information, but I'm going to try and connect this to the uh, graph description later on, okay? So this is important for the uh, later activities we are going to do.
Okay, I hope that is enough time. So you can see all the users at the bottom of the table, right? Um, so the users uh, for each of these different type of graphs are location, function, comparison, changes in time, proportion, statistical display. So what I want you to do is I want you to match them to the correct type of graph, okay? And then the example. So I'm just showing you one by one. So the first picture, as you can see, is A. So you can put just A in front of the correct type. So this is just to create a little awareness because some or most probably you already know this information, right? So put the examples. What is A? What is B? What type of a diagram, chart, or graph is it, right? And then here you have C and D, okay? So what are C and D co called? And also you have E and F, okay? So can all of you very quickly send me a chat telling me what are the examples? I'll go back to the beginning right what are the examples uh, and the functions sorry and the users or the functions yes you can say both Right, so everyone, can you quickly send me some of the functions and the examples? Shall I stop sharing this document? And can I return to my slides? Because this is not very difficult. It's something you already know. Okay, very good. Patirana has already done. Dayal has also sent in the answer. So I'm just going to stop sharing because this is not new information as I told you. Um, very basic information. However, we need this, right? So if you don't have a strong foundation, uh, then of course what you write will show your examiners that you're confused about some of these things, right? So that's why we need to go from the very beginning, uh, make sure that... Uh, right, so... First one is diagram, right? Can you tell me what is the use of a diagram? Now, the example that I showed you of the diagram is picture E, right? E was the diagram. So if you look at that, if you, if you can remember the picture I showed you, why do we use diagrams in our communication? Yeah, very good. So function, right? To indicate function of something. Um, then what about a table, like uh, statistical table, data table? Why do we use tables? To indicate statistical display. Yeah, very true. Joseph, uh, very true, right? Now, see, sometimes some people confuse this. So we can compare. There, there's no problem about it. However, the main reason why we use a table as opposed to the other types of graphs and charts 
is that we want to display something. You see, because sometimes some people can get a confusion about it. So, we can do cousin. Why not? Right? Okay. So the main purpose later on we will talk about why that is right. So diagrams are used to indicate the tables are used to indicate statistical display. Map is to indicate the location, right? So if you really argue about it, you can also say that you can use a map to compare things, right? Compare the position of the uh, post of it to some other thing. If you want, right? You still can. However, what is the main purpose, main use of a map? It is to indicate location. So just like that, pie charts, bar charts, line graphs also have a very, very clear main purpose, right? So pie charts, why do we use pie charts? Because we need to talk about a proportion, like say, for example, the, the uh, proportion of the, the market share of a particular company, right? So you can use the, if you, if you are talking about a market share, the most appropriate type of graph to use is the pie chart, right? But you can still use a bar graph. I'm not saying don't do that. But the primary reason why we talk about sizes or proportions is the pie chart. But a lot of people don't have this knowledge. I think I did a session with all of you regarding report writing, okay? So this today's session is going to really add value to that session because a report is based on uh, data, right? So it helps us to arrive at data driven, driven decisions. Therefore, you need to know this, right? When to use a pie chart, when not to use a pie chart. So main purpose is proportion, right? But it depends on the context. However, always remember what the main purpose is, right? Bar chart, what is the reason why we use bar charts? Yeah, very true, good. So a lot of you already know this, as I said, right? Bar charts are used um, mainly for comparison, right? Line graphs, why do we use line graphs? Final one is obviously changes in time. So yes, we, we uh, use a line graph, but does that mean that you can't compare uh, if you use a line graph? No, you can, uh, you can still compare, right? So uh, one of the main things I want all of you to learn today is that simple ideas and concepts behind using graphs, charts, and tables. If you, if you have a confusion about it, then obviously your answer is going to show that to your examiners, okay? So please remember the very first thing, thing we did today, we talked about the benefits of uh, using graphs, charts, and tables. And then we talked about the reasons behind some of these um, uh, reasons behind the use of some of these graphs and charts, right? So now you know two very important things, but these are already very simple, uh, you know, areas. So the next thing I want you to write down and take notes on is something very important that a lot of people make a lot of mistakes with. So the, the next area I want to talk about is the language, right? So now you know if your examiners give you a pie chart, most probably the pie chart's purpose is to look at the proportions. But how do you exactly talk about these proportions? That is when you need appropriate language, right? So when it comes to describing graphs and charts, a lot of people may be unaware that there's a specialized vocabulary for this, which is called trend vocabulary, 
Okay, so trend vocabulary is a vocabulary component under the larger vocabulary uh, in the English language. But this is very rarely come across by a lot of people because we normally don't deal with graphs and charts, right? So therefore, what I'm saying is you need to improve your trend vocabulary knowledge. Okay, let me ask a quick question. Think quickly and let me know. Yes, so Ashan is asking a very good question. Uh, due to the data's nature, we can get the most relevant graph to compare our ideas. That is very true, right? So um, I think that's good, Ashan, Ashan, that you asked it. Because again, let, I, I, I already mentioned this. But probably um, I, it's a good idea to re-emphasize on this, right? Now, we are talking about exam situation. But in real life, you are using graphs and charts for professional purposes, right? So if you, if you participated in the report writing session with me, uh, there also I told you there's a, there's a big difference between writing a report in the exam and as opposed to writing a report uh, for professional purposes. Same thing applies here. So I'm today mostly talking about the exam context, right? But in real life, as you say, as a professional person, you can definitely decide on the most suitable uh, graph type and, be, and, and, and do a lot of other things also, right? There are a lot of creative uh, techniques of using graphs and charts, as I told you at the beginning. Um, I talked about that in, an, in another session where um, we talked about storytelling with data. So in that session, I talked about it, which is not really useful to you um, in the exam situation. So I don't want to talk about it too much now, right? But thank you very much, Ashan, for asking that question, right? Okay, so let me bring you back to the basics of using graphs and charts. Now, we know the benefits of using graphs and charts. We know... Uh, the real reasons behind using each type of graph. And now we are talking about the specialized vocabulary needed to get a very high score in your exams, right? So my question to you is, can all of you tell me how many main trends are there in a graph or a chart? Like particularly bar graphs, and line graphs. How many main trends can be there? Any ideas? Okay, good. Joseph has already given the answer. Anybody else? How many main trends can there be in a line graph, column graph? I'm not including pie charts because as I told you, trends are not indicated in pie charts. The reason is uh, we use pie charts for proportions and the sizes of something, right? So, okay, let's go ahead with Joseph's answer because we have a lot to cover. So there are, uh, okay, Rishini says four, Fonseca says three, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, bottom line, please write it down. Now, these are the reasons maybe why answers are not really up to the standard we expect, right? So it's like you can't build a house, okay, if the materials that you are using are substandard, isn't it? So if the cement that you are using is not good, if the bricks that you are using are not properly made up to a particular quality or standard, whatever, how much of money you spent on the beautification and the outlook of the house will not guarantee that it will last for a long time, no? Why? What is the reason? Because you can't build a good house and expect to live in it for like 50, 60 years if you are using substandard materials, okay? Now, what does it have to do with graphs and charts? 
same thing applies to exam answers right if you are not using good quality basic materials your overall answer leaves your examiners with a very negative opinion about your skill okay so get the basic material properly up to the standard that's why we need to talk about it. okay there are three main um, trends in in a line graph or a bar chart right three main ones i'm not talking about the sub ones right so what are the three main trends uh, in a bar graph or a line graph so we call them right i hope you can see the slides that i'm changing so we have up trends right things that are going up uh, down trends things that are going down right and also don't forget many people forget this there are equal trends right there are trends which remain the same level so those are called equal trends right so there are three main trends up trends down trends and equal trends or level trends that basically you need to pay a lot of attention to okay so that's what you need to first of all identify when you look at a graph or a chart so the next thing as i said now one day now since i'm also a teacher educator at the university of colombo i was teaching a similar lesson to teachers of english right so they are not students they are teachers so and i gave them a line graph and um, i have i asked them to write a description thinking that they already know this so i remember like out of the 15 people who wrote about 10 people had major issues in their writing and i still remember one i'm not saying this to laugh at anyone right it's just i want to make a point here so it's not at all i mean all of us learned it from somewhere no so i didn't i was not born with the knowledge no so just like all of you i learned so i'm not at all laughing with any i'm just trying to make make a point here okay so uh, i remember one of the teachers have written um, the line went up in february and the line came down by um, april and by december the line went very very up right so i mean that the point is this type of language is extremely uh, substandard we don't expect our teachers of english or ca students to write uh, descriptions in that manner right so you need to remember even if you are describing a graph or a chart please use formal language right apart from formal language you have to also use what i told you what did i tell you can you remember what what is that type of vocabulary called can anyone tell me the word i told you in the chat ah uh, very good fonseca has given the correct answer so if there's any if there's any confusion about the spelling please check the chat and i think some of you have correctly understood the word right so trend vocabulary especially when it comes to line graph bar graphs which are the two most commonly used types of graphs and charts either in exam or in a professional context you need to know the trend vocabulary right so how do you avoid the how do you how do you avoid the mistake this teacher made in your writing how do Miss, you yes miss chamika sorry to interrupt could no, you please no. put this presentation in the presentation mode then we will be yeah yes uh, but if i put it in the presentation mode i won't be able to see the chat and all that no ah okay okay that's why i really because with my other laptop i can do that but this one so if you can uh, like uh, increasing the, like the zoom i will i will yes i'll do that ah, okay. so, yeah. thank you miss yeah sure so yeah so let me thanks a lot uh, augusta for pointing that out yeah um no worries uh, 
uh, yeah. So uh, basically, what we need to do is how do we avoid that teacher's mistake, right? Because we all write like this. It's not just her. Uh, there were uh, there are a lot of people. I, I mean, sometimes I have seen this type of language in formal reports as well. So um, how do we avoid saying very very up, right? The line went very very up. What are the mistakes in that example? Think about it, everyone, right? Because this is common scenario. This is a common scenario. I think examiners have time and again pointed out uh, this weakness. And sometimes even the teachers um, are unable to uh, correct. So today, please make this session your last a uh, situation where you use substandard language to describe graphs and charts, right? How, what are the mistakes in that example? The teacher said the by January, the line went up, by April, the line came down, and by December, the line went very, very up, okay? So all of them are talking about uptrends and downtrends. So instead of saying the line, that is the first mistake you should never ever talk about the line or the bar in either of these graphs and charts. That is mistake one. Mistake two is very, very informal colloquial language use. Very, very up. That's a colloquial. Colloquial means the way you speak, no? right? So we don't write uh, based on the way, way we speak because these are two different communication modes, which a lot of people don't understand right that is the second mistake the third mistake is the um awkward language right the language that a native speaker will never use that type okay i'm maybe i can't say never but generally they will not use right so who are these native speakers native speakers means people whose first language is english so if you are training for ielts this is a good tip for you right uh, because if you are planning to go abroad, as you know, you have to take exams like IELTS or TOEFL or whatever that is. And one of the things they always check is whether these people know trend vocabulary. So you need to learn about these, right? So instead of saying the line went up, you can use different words as I have shown here based on what exactly is happening to describe it absolutely accurately, right? So if we look at these words, you can say the number of smokers, right? Without saying the line, because the line always represents something, right? So the number of smokers soared in December, right? The price soared in November rocket you can say it's then rocketed to right then you have another word leap the figures leapt to another word is climbed the number of televisions sold in 2010 climbed to climbed by right surge it then surged to a high of 75000 million but can you blindly put these words anywhere you want? No. That is why you have to practice with these, right? You need to take a graph or a chart, sit down and try to write a good description. Practice again and again. And especially, I think um, this, you know, the exams that you do will really help you when you have to tackle an exam uh, like IELTS or TOEFL, because they require you to have very, very high skills in graphs and charts, right? Okay, so every word here is different in meaning, but they are all talking about increases. Let's move to the next one, downwards, right? So instead of saying the line came down in uh, April, you can say the figures plummeted right, plummeted to a low of 20%. Please remember the prepositional use. I remember one of the examiners have given a comment that a lot of students are making problems and issues with 
the use of correct prepositions, right? So if you say plummeted to a low, then you can say plummeted to a low of 20% or you can say plummeted by, then you have to do a calculation, a different calculation. So these little words, so if you say off, right, you do a different calculation. But if you say by, then you do a different calculation. But a lot of students don't understand that. So be very, very wary and careful about your prepositional use, right? Okay, um, sink. So plummet is decreasing. Sink is also de decreasing. It's not a kitchen sink. Huh? So it's like sinking <laughs> means it's going down. So after that, it sank to 75%, 75 or you can say sank by. Habay ara kiwa ge by kiwa mukadde teruma two kiena teruma neme. Right? Loku arte vena swima ketana vena. If you say it sank to seventy five, right? You are indicating the exact number in the graph. But if you say it sank by five, then that means pahak aduvima pamana aduvima, right? Not so you have to think very, very carefully. Me watch na apite hitte na hitte na tangle to oban na ba, right? Because then you are making bigger mistakes, right? So I would say before you use these words, you need to seriously look at the graph that you are trying to describe, and you have to properly understand. So again, this is a problem area when it comes to report writing. Professional product your deliverables have to be up to the standard. Why would you be hired if the deliverables are not good? Neither. I think a deliverable like an effect when I'm making. Right? So how you said sand to, sand by, off, uh, between, right, around, all of these prepositional um, ideas or words actually have a big impact in your writing. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, Augusta. So Augusta has said, we will upload the video to CA Online Academy YouTube channel. So that's, again, uh, I think all of you, if you're having problems like me uh, with the power cut, you can probably, uh, yeah, refer to it. Uh, yeah, okay. So uh, Ashan is asking by and off. Then api udaharanatikak balamudan. The reason I'm talking in Sinhal is also, I wish I could speak Tamil. Me mukati samahara velata me prepositional usage kiyaneka. Right? There are certain things in the English language that you can learn externally, but however, prepositions, uh, research also has proven that it's very difficult to teach prepositions. It's something that you acquire rather than learn, right? So if I very quickly talk, give an answer to Ashan, by and off. So if we say, it then plummeted to a low of 20%, right? So uh, it then plummeted to, uh, okay, sorry. It then plummeted by 20% ki what makadu teeruma? Vista ki ngaduna, api hitam siyak ki buna, 100%, right? So if you write a sentence, it then, it then plummeted by 20%. Ito kota arte venne makakta. Seeing a pivista kaduka lasu with the end on in a graphic line maker, right? Namut ehimavela netang a pekali in a verdi, right? So imagine if the, the indicator or the line or whatever it is is somewhere around, um, say, 77 percent ehimaki on the bearhina, right? Because by ki and a kia das, the mea do we ma, kuchara do we ma, right? Um, it then plummeted to, what is the indicator? 
you do not do any calculations there, right? So these are some of the small things you need to work on your own. Right? So that's why I encourage all of you, please don't drop out from the session before we finish it because I would like all of you to write it down today and make today the last session that you really uh, benefit from this and make this the last session which you attend regarding charts, graphs and tables, right? And believe me, as I said, if you are planning then for higher studies or uh, going abroad, this is going to really save your life, right? Um, so, uh, next one is drop. Drop, everyone knows about drop. However, drop a comment and then past tense bag or duck writer. Now, remember graphs and charts. Generally, we need to use the past tenses, right? How many past tenses are there? Can someone tell me how many past tenses are there in English? Okay, what are those? Three, are you sure? Yeah, four. We have four, right? So you basically it means that, yeah, maybe like oh, one we do. So, um, so simple past tense. So any of these tensors can be used when you're describing a graph. However, there's one condition. If sometimes you all in your field, in accounting management field, you all make predictions also, right? Say the graph, now this is 2022. However, the graph can indicate data for 2026. Then you have to switch your, your tense uh, into the future tensors. Again, we have four tensors, right? Simple, future simple, uh, future continuous, future perfect, future perfect continuous. So it doesn't mean a cup use karana kiyana kane me me kiyana, right? Now, mud bahutare up data diha api balan noni hundate, a baluham api tirana kanana mona tense kada, good up well out of past tensors at the make it up, right? Uh, so her passive voice. So you will definitely need to use a lot of passive voice. So that's another major area if possible. I think uh, uh, Augusta and we can request uh, someone to do like a good session on grammar that is needed because a lot of people don't know how to write, how to distinguish between uh, the, the tensors and the uh, passive voice. They can partial in that. Right, so that's a that's a bit of a problem. So work on your because there 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 are a lot of um, resources available on grammar grammar to or the So just make sure you all work on your own. And um, I always equate grammar to hygiene. It's like why do I say hygiene? I can it, but gradually it builds on you over time it builds on you right so right so what does it have to do with grammar grammar is like that i mean no one will notice it that much in work, but gradually it will build on you. It was a port the port the cartier than a meat and report the kadu no to come out grammar ban a meat, right? So make sure that you all are paying a lot of attention to, um, yeah, I will do that. So we to ask upwards, uh, yeah, you can write it down or you can just take a screenshot even, right? Because these are useful, but you need to practice. There are many others. I will try to, unfortunately, now I don't have power and I can't find any of my material. So I will try to share some more upwards. I don't want to confuse you. That's why, mommy, because sometimes you might get too confused with too many words, right? So don't try with too many words. Just take a simple approach. 
Okay, so up verbs, then we talked about down verbs, slip back and dip, right? So dipping is also like you just dip, like you, you can say, for example, you can say, I dipped a piece of bread into my soup and ate it. Right? Uh, so all of these words, did you notice something about them? All these upwards, the up verbs and down verbs, they make the English language very powerful and visual. Why? Because they have taken common verbs that we generally use in a day-to-day -day basis and they have converted them in under trend vocabulary into a completely new word, right? So, for example, that means rocket. We all know what a rocket is. In general English also, we use the word rocket. I saw a rocket. Uh, a famous person in Sri Lanka sent a rocket to the moon and now we can't find the rocket or the money for it. Okay. So we can say a sentence like that. But in trend vocabulary, a rocket is not a rocket. In trend vocabulary, rocket means something increased drastically, very sharply. Right? So it has a degree. Degree a kakya May. Once you finish education, what you get? Uh, the severity of increase. Neither. So you have to think about it. That's why I mean that trend vocabulary is something that you have to patiently study and understand. Right? Right? But once you get it, you get it. Right? You don't have to spend. Uh, even a moment after uh, you understand. So do some basic practices because this lesson will stay on for your life. It will give you a lot of benefits and confidence also, right? So trend vocabulary is a very specialized vocabulary uh, in the English language, which takes common words and, and gives them a very powerful meaning to visualize information, right? So another word, that I will just tell you now before we move to the next activity. I'm going to show you a video in the next activity, right? Uh, so before I go there, let me give another example how beautiful the English language is, right? Modest. Can someone very quickly tell me what does modest mean? Generally, what does modest mean? Any ideas? What does modest mean? Okay, so modest in general English, it basically means that, um, can all of you hear me still? Ah, oh, okay, thank you very much. Okay, I thought I got disconnected again. Right, so modest means in general English, you can say things like he's a very modest person. That means that, okay, uh, he's a very humble, very, you know, that type of person. modest person Had I trend vocabulary, again, uh, in trend vocabulary also, we use the word modest, right? We can say something like there was a modest increase in sales in January. There was a modest increase. Creative use of language, right? So a modest increase means there was a small increase or a slight increase. Can all of you remember the example I gave you from the teacher? So she said the line went very, very up. 
එහෙම පාවිච්චි කරන කෙනයි අනිත් කෙනා the person who says there was a modest increase right imagine the immediate change in the way you describe visual information at the reckene kiyena very very out and the other person says there was a modest increase me denna gen ittam apita lesi koi kenada uh creative use of language danne hondata study karala thiyena hondata meken confidence thiyena kena kavuda right so this is exactly what i want you to understand okay so i'm moving on to uh hopefully this plays i'm going to stop sharing and uh, let me go to the slide first okay let's come back to this a little later because i want to do because my if i get disconnected again it's going to be a problem so can all of you take a quick screenshot of this what please because i'm going to show you a video and uh, in the video i am going to show you a person presenting information using graphs and charts and he is going to use the type of language the creative language i told you about right so i want you to listen to the video watch the video and complete these gaps uh, since we can't take too much of time i can't ask you to um, write these down but can all of you please take a screenshot or a picture of this one so that you can just um send me only the answers uh do you need more time or shall i show you the next slide as well let me move to the next slide please take a picture of this also right and then we will switch to the video right hopefully you all have taken um, any more time needed okay so i'm going to stop sharing and you all remember the task i asked you to do right so we will watch a video and i want you to listen to that person carefully and i want you to use the exact words that he uses and complete these gaps right okay Um uh -huh. 
can you see the video now Right, so let me play that a little. Right, we've got your notes. Yes, Can you hear the sound? Yes, Miss, we can hear the sound. Excellent. Right, so let me take it to the beginning and then we will watch it at least twice because it's very short. So just listen to it carefully and use uh, your listening skills because next session we will talk about the importance of listening um, and also think about what we discussed so far regarding trend vocabulary. Okay, here goes. Right, we've got your notes? Yes, I do. We'll start with the map. Right. Now I'd like to refer to the first graph. As you can see, this is a bar graph measuring net sales over the first 10 months of the year. You'll notice that sales rose steadily in the first few months. Then there was a marked increase in April. They peaked in May at around 3.2 million and levelled off. Then there was a dramatic drop in the following month, followed by a significant increase in August, and this trend has continued up until the present. What was the reason for the sudden drop in July? This was mainly due to a drop off in air conditioner sales, so it's a seasonal effect. Could it be a consequence of the negative effect of the interest rate rise? Possibly. Now, if I could draw your attention to this next diagram, this is a line graph of sales. The blue line represents air conditioner sales. The red line shows heaters. As you'll note, air conditioner sales dropped steadily from January to July, bottoming out then while heater sales experienced a sharp increase from March to June, then dropped markedly from June to July, then declined through to September with a pronounced drop in October. Does this explain the fluctuation in total sales? Largely. If we look at this pie diagram, you can see that air conditioners and heaters together represent more than half of our total sales, but they vary seasonally while other appliances are fairly steady through the year. Well, we can't sell air conditioners when it's cold. <laughs> What's the solution? Export to Europe and America. Easier said than done. Okay, so I will play that once more and uh, you can check what, how, how many of the words do you have um, heard and completed and uh, do this once more. Right, we've got your notes? Yes, I do. We'll start with the map. Right. Now I'd like to refer to the first graph. As you can see, this is a bar graph measuring net sales over the first 10 months of the year. You'll notice that sales rose steadily in the first few months. Then there was a marked increase in April. They peaked in May at around 3.2 million and levelled off. Then there was a dramatic drop in the following month, followed by a significant increase in August, and this trend has continued up until the present. What was the reason for the sudden drop in July? This was mainly due to a drop off in air conditioner sales, so it's a seasonal effect. Could it be a consequence of the negative effect of the interest rate rise? Possibly. Now, if I could draw your attention to this next diagram, this is a line graph of sales. The blue line represents air conditioner sales. The red line shows heaters. As you'll note, air conditioner sales dropped steadily from January to July, bottoming out then 
while heater sales experienced a sharp increase from March to June, then dropped markedly from June to July, then declined through to September with a pronounced drop in October. Does this explain the fluctuation in total sales? Largely. If we look at this pie diagram, you can see that air conditioners and heaters together represent more than half of our total sales, but they vary seasonally while other appliances are fairly steady through the year. Well, we can't sell air conditioners when it's cold. <laughs> What's the solution? Export to Europe and America. Easier said than done. OK, everyone, you can check your answers uh, and finalise them, and then we will talk about them.
Okay, so everyone, I hope you have checked your answers. And uh, so let me show you the um, again. Right, can all of you quickly send in some of the answers at least? Like say for, for example, let's try to, yeah, okay, good. So let's do one, two, five first. Yeah, good. So the first one is correct. I want all of you to give yourselves marks, okay? So out of 10 questions, how many marks have you scored? And let's see, you cannot have any spelling mistake, right? So be honest to yourself. If you have spelling mistakes, you can't give yourself a mark. I want you to, um, if the answer is completely correct, grammar, spelling, everything is correct, then you can give yourself um, a mark, okay? So, um, the first one is therefore, this is a bar graph. Right, this is a bar graph. Uh, second one, you will notice that sales rose steadily. Then the third one is marked. How do you spell marked? M A R K E D. Marked increase. Number four, they peaked, peaked, right? P E A K E D peaked in May at around 3.2. Number three, um, not two million and leveled. Now, how do you spell level? L E V E L E D. Right? So be careful if the spelling is wrong, you can't give yourself a mark. Number five, there was a dramatic drop. Dramatic, how do you spell? D R A M A T I C drop in the following month right out of these what are your marks five okay let's move to the next this is a yeah some of you can you send some answers regarding six okay this is a line graph very good uh, the blue line what the blue line represents so now, I said grammar has to be correct. Okay, what if you put represent? Is it correct? It's incorrect. So you you can't give yourself a mark uh, because it's singular, isn't it? Represents shows shows eaters, right? Again, S is very, very important. If you don't put the S there, you don't mark because grammar is wrong. Then subject has to go with main verb, right? So air conditioner sales, what happened? Number eight, everyone? No, not just dropped. Ah, very good. Dropped steadily from now. When you write January. You have to remember something. January is a proper noun. No, when you write all the proper nouns, what are proper nouns? Names uh, of people, things, and places, right? So January is a name for a month. So therefore, when you write J, J has to be capital. If it is not capital, you can't give yourself a mark, right? So air conditioner sales dropped steadily. steadily. Steadily, how do you spell? S-T-E-A-D-I-L-Y. Dropped steadily. What if you have written steadily dropped? Right? You can't give yourself a mark. So the correct answer is dropped steadily. So we will find out what the reason is. From January to July and, uh, sorry, January to July, bottoming out then okay very good what i mean means b o t t o m i n -D. Oh, very good let's see ah joseph has gotten the answer correct very good 
Uh, heat cells. What happened? Number nine. Okay, it's not experience. Past tense. Remember, if you don't put the past tense correctly, no more. Heat cells experienced. Right? There has to be a D. A sharp increase. Check for the grammar. Right? Heat cells. What happened? Number ten. Heat cells. Decline. No, that's not the correct answer. Heat cells to September. You have to listen carefully because some of these questions, the structure is different. So this shows like you, why you need to have a lot of listening skills, right? What happened? Number 10, can someone send me the answers? Okay. Let's see if you all can catch that here. Now, I'm going to very quick yeah, very good. So, Joseph, again, correct. Heater says decline through to September with a what? I want you to listen to the last one again, right? So, I'm going to share the uh, video again. Now, this time, I'm going to show you a section which is going to show you, which is going to talk about the trend vocabulary. Some of the words that I told you about, the video will tell you the grammar and how to use it. So please listen very carefully. Now you know how important your listening skill is. And I want you to try and write down some of the main points that they're talking about regarding the grammar and the use of trend vocabulary in the video, right? So here I'm going to play the video again. Right. Well, you know, it's yes, start solution. Export to you when referring to a diagram and a pie chart. Well, we can't sell air conditioners. When Today, we're looking at presenting information using charts and graphs. We saw three types of diagram: a bar or column graph, a line graph. Look at. Measuring net sales over the first 10 months of the year. Tan says, I like prefer... When referring to a diagram or graph, first direct your audience to Tan. Practice with Tan some phrases to use for this. I'd like to refer to the first graph. If we have a look at this graph, if I could direct your attention to the graph. Looking at the graph on the screen. Let's look at the language Tan uses to describe what the graph shows. You'll notice that sales rose Two words. As words is a noun or verb. For example, we may talk about an increase or a decrease in numbers. Other words for an in climb, improvement, up to. And also
verb. To increase, to rise, to climb. But we often add more descriptive words, adjectives. Fast or slow. Other words for a big change. are significant, marked, massive, pronounced, substantial, and be made into adverbs as by adding L for big. But, but informally we say a lot. Other words for small are slight and insignificant. And their adverbs slightly, insignificantly. Other words for a fast or quick change are sharp, dramatic, sudden. We can use steady or moderate, and the adverbs steadily and moderately. Now, try changing the phrases from noun phrases into verb phrases. For example, if Tan says there was a dramatic increase in sales, you say sales increased dramatically. Okay. Have a try. There was a steady rise in sales. steady rise in sales. How do you say it? using the noun phrase. How do you say what is the other man saying this? Specializing sales. Enough to listen to this. You have to see them and write it down so that I encourage you to write right now. That's why I bother you to take um, and read notebooks today. So please down and try to translate it, convert it to the, to the second method. So steady rise in sales to uh, use the other method, the, the now phrase uh, method. Can you hear me clearly now? Yeah, I think it's a connection issue, but should be okay now. Is it still bad? 
Yeah, it's uh, still breaking, but uh, better than before. So it will analyze the support into the network. So, right, so just try to the answer this one. There was a sale, it was a ski rise sale. How do you see the other? <coughs> It's not clear, Miss. Um, like I say, so we believe you can try and answer. Just let me can still if the making still. Sales rose steadily. There was a significant fall in sales. Sales fell significantly. There was a slight recovery in okay. sales. Sales recovered Do you slightly. Hear that part, or am I still breaking? In absence, I will rejoin. Then I will log out and rejoin and see if it works. Am I still breaking up? No, it's okay, Miss. <clears throat> right. So, basically, what I wanted to. Um, that there are different methods of writing about trend vocabulary. So as we were talking about the grammar and the string, which the examiners have talked about, I think this thing is really important to all of you. Right. So I'm going to start now. Important things. I want to go to my slides. Okay. Okay, I hope you can see now the slides. Yes, slides are visible. Yes. Okay, thank you. Right, so now um, I'm not going to give these to you, but I want to come for the exam. So, uh, let me so you can Again, the is making miss. I think maybe the connection problem. Shall I try to log out and re log in? Uh, now it's okay. It's, uh, suddenly it comes and going. Let's okay. see for once. No. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway, now this one is an activity for all of you to do. All the, so, I will not need to talk too much. Just look at the activity. Can all of you very quickly try and come? I have given all the words here, right? Um, the instruction models or you the correct slot. Okay, so let me give you about three to four minutes and all of you very quickly finish this and then we'll talk about the answers, right? So I'm going to try type the instructions in the chat. Check the instruction. You words and complete the description correctly. 
If you are done, okay, my friends, this is going to be That is our answer in the chat. Yeah, Uh, dear students, uh, since uh, Ms. Tamika had a uh, connection issue, uh, she just log logged out and she will connect again. Till then, you can do the activity she gave you and put the answers to the chat box. As I already put you in the chat box, the recording of this session will be uploaded to the CS Sri Lanka YouTube channel, which is uh, called as CA Online Academy. We will upload the recording of this session to that YouTube channel. Then you can refer to that if you have any connection problem or electricity uh, power cuts or like those problems are there. So you can uh, watch that video once we upload it. Always keep in touch with that YouTube channel. Uh, not only the CS uh, online classroom sessions, but also the webinars for each subject we have uploaded to that YouTube channel. 
please check that youtube channel and you may have uh, you may obtain a lot of information and knowledge from those yeah she has joined again miss shamika yes yeah so oh, can you hear me clearly now augusta yes miss now you are clear <laughs> oh, okay so i've been <laughs> changing to this and that i'm really Life is not really easy you know I so that's know, really... like today is a really bad day for me. From morning, for I've me been also, having a lot of problems. This power cut, <laughs> I just switched my connection to the data, and I I was really scared. Even the data that... is not working, Augusta. That's the problem. Normally, yeah. I don't have an issue, but now see today, mm -hmm. even the data is not really properly working. If something happened to my connection, the whole session will be gone. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> So I'm Please praying and not. No, no, I'm almost <laughs> done today. I hope uh, all of you who are there uh, yeah. have kind of gotten the main points at least. You know. Yeah. So, I was telling to the students that we are uploading the session to the YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah, that's right. Yes. If it is not clear, as... Augusta, let me know. Like then we can maybe sure, clarify some of the pro problems they may yeah. have. Yeah, and it's students probably also... there. Yeah, if dear students, if you have questions regarding these sessions, you can always put to the chat box to clear yeah, your unclear yeah. point because yeah. that is the main reason we are having online session. Otherwise, we just we can have the recording and just upload to the YouTube without yeah. doing that directly. We just have this with the participation of the students only for the sake of you to have some room to clear your unclear points that's why and and uh, that's a very good point augusta because i think a lot of people have that that misunderstanding about language yeah. learning you know this is not yeah. accountancy or management you all yeah. of you are trying to learn a language and to master it to a very high level right so in yeah, that true. sense it's not just enough i mean if that is the case why do you need uh, teachers to uh, teach business communication or english because there are a lot of resources available videos available mm. online so everyone yeah. can watch those and just learn but in <clears throat> english it does not happen like that you have to have in human interaction to learn a language properly I mean that's a very good point you brought up because I hope uh, those who are remaining today, unfortunately some have left, but those who are remaining today, you will understand that it's really important. Like how we learned our mother tongue. Think about it, right? If you are a Sinhalese speaker or a Tamil speaker, now all of you are very proficient in that language. You know, you know grammar, you know spelling, you know vocabulary. How did we come to this point? Right? Did you learn from the TV or the radio? No, it's like from your mother, your father, your grandparents, and you have made many mistakes and they have corrected you. So research has also proven that, uh, you know, just watching recordings, just doing uh, listening will not help. It's always, as Augusta said, like humanly, you have to ask your questions, right? Uh, any problems or doubts that you have, you have to always ask someone who knows about that language. So that's why I think CA is taking the trouble to do this as a live session. But unfortunately, unlike the previous three sessions, um, we ha I have actually experienced a lot of technical issues today. Uh, and I'm those really are sorry, and everyone. Everyone. No, that's okay. We can understand. That's and also, I, I have one uh, news for the students this is not the last session in the future also we are uh, organizing such uh, sessions we are which will be helpful for you to uh, uh, as a support for the cs examinations so keep in touch with us we are all, always we are informing the dates and the sessions what we are planning to do so means over to you you can continue yeah yeah that's really also important isn't it augusta keep on yeah. like reminding students that yeah. language is along with their technical knowledge as you said they need to keep on updating so just watching yeah. today's session if you had any problems come to the next session and then there yeah. we can talk about the next level that you need to reach yes, this to session is basically yeah this session is basically targeting the cs examination the uh, uh, yeah. we is also connecting with us all the time because mm. uh, with with her support we just 
started this session and initiated this because yeah. this this program is basically targeted for the cs1 cs1 2 3 4 examination yeah exactly so uh, i think the students will take advantage okay yeah. miss we can yeah. continue the session yeah okay very quickly i'm going to jump to the last part and actually uh, it's a good thing that you reminded us about the exam august because the last section i'm going to just show them how this knowledge they can take and they can apply it in the exam right so very quickly give yourselves marks and i'm just going to give you the answers it is of note that the overall trend for the first six months of the year was upward right overall trend was upward because usually when you write the overall sentence you do not write about the fluctuations after a modest increase of 10 units now remember the word modest i already explained to you what it means in trend language so if you look look at january look at january everyone in the chart in the graph look at february is it a big jump is it a big increase no it's a very small increase and without saying a small increase because why can't we say a small increase because that's how little children will write about a graph right but as opposed to school children or little children all of you are professionals and adults so your language also needs to reflect reflect your professionalism right so it has you have to use beautiful creative language but not you can't create beautiful language on your own there are certain accepted limitations here right so after a moderate modest increase of 10 units in february um, the amount of units sold rocketed so look at february to march everyone what is happening february to march there's a huge increase a sudden increase a very important increase increase right so that you can say rocketed to 78 in march before climbing down uh, sorry before um climbing steadily to 104 by end of june right now look at march to June, we are looking at before climbing steadily to 104 by the end of June, right? So, this is just a very small sample of the big answer that you need to write in the exam. Okay, so let's try to look at the final segment of today's discussion. And I have brought you a sample question, exam question. The following column graph displays the annual enrollment figures of four postgraduate accounting degree programs at four universities over the last five years. Compare the enrollment figures of the same program in different years and the enrollment figures of different programs uh, in different years and describe the most significant points depicted in the graph. So I just told you that you do not have to describe each and every point. What you need to do is you need to notice the important points in the graph that is given to you and describe those only. Because the word limit is really important, 150 to 200 words only. So you can't write about each and every point. So here is the graph. Um, okay, where did I put the graph? Okay, so the graph is missing. Yeah. So basically the graph is, I have forgotten to put it here, but um, right. So some of the things that you need to notice here, I, I'll show you a different graph because yeah, this one, okay, fine. Right, so let's look at this one, same thing, right? The graph is given to you and therefore you need to try and de describe. So as I just told you, do not write about each and every point here. So nine, some people would do this. They will write about 1960, 1965, 1970, 75, until 2000. That is completely unnecessary. Then what do you do? You need to notice the important features. So what are the important features? Right? 
uh, the starting points, the ending points are very important, not just for one line, but for both lines. And then any other drama that is happening. So obviously 1965 is important for the uh, females here. 1970, 1975 is important. But 1975 to 2000 is not really very, very significant. So what you can do is you can summarize the information in those places. So do not describe each and every point. Instead, just like I did just now, try to identify the key features in this graph. And that is also not enough, right? As the exam question said, you need to compare and contrast the data where relevant. So here you can see men and women. So don't just talk about only the men or the women. Don't talk about just one, what is happening with one line. Talk about both of them and talk about what the graph is actually showing. So finally, I want to emphasize on what I said and one of the examples I gave you. Remember the teacher's example. The line went up, the line went down, the line went very, very up, right? So please try to avoid writing such unprofessional descriptions. And as the examiners have also commented, look at the, lot, the amount of mistakes our students are making. So try and avoid some of these common mistakes. And if you wish, we can have another session to talk about and target some of these common mistakes. And I can teach you some strategies to avoid and overcome from these mistakes, right? So bottom line, everyone, um, make sure that there is a good structure in your answer. Make sure if it is a if it if it is a line graph or a bar graph, you are talking about the key features, right? And you're summarizing as well as you're comparing, contrasting. So even though we call it a graph description, in reality, in the final exam, your examiners, your examiners are expecting you to uh, compare, contrast, uh, and, and show trends, and show professionalism through the use of trend vocabulary, right? So they're expecting you to reverse the process, right? So if I go back to the beginning, I hope all of you remember how I started. So I started by showing you a description, and this description, has to create this image in the examiner's mind. So even though the question looks very simple, in the exam, you need to have thorough practice, right? And you have to demonstrate various different skills that you have, right? So it's not just about, it's not just about looking at a graph and writing, writing, writing without thinking. You need to have good, um, you need to have good thinking skills. You need to have good thinking skills and you have to show examiners that you are capable in understanding and interpreting data, right? So the bottom line, what are the things we discussed today? We talked about the key, the advantages of using graph charts effectively. We talked about uh, the different types of graphs and charts and the main reasons behind using them. We also talked about different trends, the three main trends in a graph or a chart. We talked about the trend vocabulary, specialized vocabulary. And we, we looked at some of the grammar and how people in professional contexts use these graphs and, uh, uh, graphs and charts. By looking at the video, you saw how people in business would generally use a graph or a chart. So 
with that knowledge now you need to sit down use pen and paper time yourself and practice right because believe me there is no other way to improve your writing skills other than to sit and time and practice so don't just write keep a timer with you and practice how fast you can do this right so bottom line uh, make sure that you don't commit any of the uh, critical mistakes that i told you about make sure that your language is professional and you are very very confident when it comes to writing also i want to just finish the uh, session today by reminding you of something uh, one of the examiners have said yes, uh, sorry yeah sorry to interrupt uh, one yes. student has raised his hand after your explanation i think we can allow him to ask yeah, his sure. question sure yes um, just very quickly let me uh, remind what the examiner said the examiner said that sometimes there are students who seems to just write things in order to get one or two marks right just to get a few marks so that they know they can get 40% so everyone please don't have that type of behavior or attitude because i think all of us lecturers in the in ca ca as an institute also want you to achieve the best that you can right but if you put only if you put only a little effort and you are expecting some marks i think that is going to have a big impact in the way you execute your work in your professional life as well right so your student habits will definitely translate into professional habits as well so please make sure that you all are taking full benefit of today's session and finally i am again very very sorry about uh, the technical issues but hopefully the key points i have made just now are clear in your mind and bottom line sit down write and practice that's it right okay yes augusta we can give the student um a chance to uh, ask the questions Yeah, Ranga, do you have a question? Madam, can you share the slides? Normally, I don't share my slides because the moment you have the slides, you all are doing other stuff, right? So why don't we do it like this? Um, you have the video, so in the video you can play it as many times, you no? Know, so the slides are clearly there, right? So you can. watch the video again and again and if there are any questions i'm sure augusta will uh, forward them to me and i will try and send you a handout the handout class handout which has more activities for you to practice on right and apart from that i think uh, um, if you can access past papers you can do this um, as a practice right so i will send you the handout Uh, which has more activities plus you can watch the video and you can uh, practice with the trend vocabulary thank you so uh, yeah that's all from me uh, everyone uh, are there students uh, do you have any questions if you have you can raise your hands or easily you can put your question to the chat box then miss chamika will answer them if you have any question you can raise your hand or just put to the chat box yeah and another small thing i think ranga asked asked about it i think he's worried about uh, uh, trend vocabulary right so my advice is try to practice with the 10 words i have shown you this is more than enough right uh these these two sets i'm showing you these it's there in the video these words are more than enough for you to write a good answer don't try to collect more and more words and end up getting confused once you are very confident with these words i think then uh, you can do further studies on the internet because internet is full of these activities just type google the word trend vocabulary right 
so from grade 1 to grade <laughs> university level you will probably find train vocabulary uh, materials and you can work on them afterwards right but uh, important thing is everyone just take it slow because all of you are working you don't have time to really uh, you know uh, do it up to maybe ielts level but at least some sort of practicing has to happen that is uh, absolutely necessary listening to me is not going to help anyone you need to sit down write it show it to someone who's good with english and get some sort of feedback okay so uh, do that and i'm sure all of you will get excellent marks in the exam exam seems there are no problem for the moment yes. anyway if you have any questions afterwards you can uh, easily uh, contact our education division then we will direct you for the solution uh, thank you very much miss chamika for your thank time you and contribution much, thanks a lot yeah, everyone for the you are remaining <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry Big about that. I'm last getting time, from uh, I think last time Thank you. We had a lot of students, right, uh, Augusta? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So now today, probably because of the technical issues, uh, they have left. So thank you very much, Achala and Augusta, for giving me the opportunity, and uh, all of you. Thank you so much for being here without uh, logging out. and i hope today's session was important and useful to you dear students thank you very much for being uh, like connecting with us till the last moment uh, your dedication like we can see your dedication so thank you very much for your contribution and again miss chamika and miss sachala thank you very much we will meet again like uh, we are same kind of a session which is helpful for the cs examinations with the support of the melf division miss achala especially so thank you very much for your time today then have a nice weekend goodbye bye good night everyone good night bye